Hi everybody, this is Joanne. Have you ever wondered what it is the doctor is looking for when they order a complete blood cell count or CBC? Well, they want to look at the formed elements of your blood and then they can tell you if you have a bacterial infection or a viral infection, possibly even cancer, or if you have a lot of these types of cells, you could have a parasitic infection. Now, of course, this isn't really a cell. This is a replica made out of a cookie and they smell delicious and trust me they taste delicious too. This cookie was made by my collaborator Isa Humble who's an anthropologist turned stay-at-home mom who started a food blog called Not So Humble Pie where she features many different types of cookies with scientific things among other things so go ahead and check her blog out. She was able to execute the images I gave her of the different types of blood cells just perfectly in beautiful detail and you will be able to enjoy her artwork as we learn about the different types of blood cells in this series of videos. Right now you're watching the introductory video and other videos are going to pop up to allow you to explore the information in more detail on your time and at your desire. So let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of Hello and welcome to the inside of one of your blood vessels. Inside your blood vessel, of course, we can find blood. And blood is about 55% plasma. 45% of the blood is made up of these formed elements. And most of these elements are cells, and then we have some little pieces of cells. 99% of those formed elements are these red blood cells, or we like to call them erythrocytes, using Greek and Latin roots, is always fun for biologists. These erythrocytes carry hemoglobin and will transport oxygen throughout the body. They are shaped in such a way to make this transport go very smoothly. Over here we are looking at two cells that do not seem to have extra granules within their cytoplasm. They also have a very large nucleus that looks nice and round. This cell is a lymphocyte and this cell is a part of the acquired immune system, meaning that it learns from previous experiences and is able to launch an attack the next time it encounters that pathogen. This monocyte is part of a secondary innate response. So if we have an infection come in, these monocytes will leave the bloodstream and turn into a much bigger cell called a macrophage that is able to help fight the infection. And these monocytes are able to slip between the cells lining the blood vessel. And as you can see, this is not such an easy task. I'm trying not to break my cookie here. Over here on this side, we can see three white blood cells that all have granules of different colors. This cell here is a basophil. Basophils are responsible for some of the reactions you feel when you have an allergic response. And they have these blue granules. This one, this orange red cell, is called an eosinophil. And eosinophils are very helpful in cleaning up the mess that basophils leave behind after an allergic response. But they are also responsible for attacking any sort of bloodborne parasite that may come into our bodies. This cell is called a neutrophil. Neutrophils love to attack bacteria and they are very sensitive to the cries of pain from cells that have been injured outside of the blood vessel. So these very highly modal cells are going to leave the bloodstream and go attack and eat bacteria. These cells are also the main component of pus and you can determine the gender of a victim of a crime by just one drop of blood because of these cells. So I'm going to go ahead and have this blood cell also leave between these cells of the blood vessel. We also have right here little pieces of cells and these are your platelets. If we didn't have platelets we would not be able to clot when we had an injury so you could essentially bleed to death. They help form the scabs that you get when you cut yourself. Of course, that's just a temporary fix until actual wound healing can occur. Go ahead and click on the various videos to learn all about the different kinds of cells. Note that all of these cells arose originally from stem cells in the bone marrow. They've adapted themselves to such a point that they often will not divide. 
exception would be the lymphocyte and that monocyte and need to be replaced continually by the stem cell